we see in John 11, the verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick. Say a certain man. A certain man. Named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So we see that Mary and Martha are the quintessential people in the Bible that reaped the reward of honor. What it means is that whereas the world thinks that being somebody who practices honor makes you a fool, the word of God teaches otherwise. Follow me. In so much as to show you that where honor exists, rewards follow. And anywhere there is no honor, rewards don't follow. You may be wondering, must we be taught to honor in the church? Well, much more in the church. I, I think that's, take me to, I believe it's Psalms 26 verse 8. L let's check out Psalms 26 verse 8. Psalms 26 verse 8. Good. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thine house, the church, and the place where thine honor dwelleth. So God's habitation, do you understand, which the psalmist loves, that is in church, is also the place where God's honor dwells. Are you listening to me? Give me verse. Uh, give, give it to me in the NLT. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Can you see that? Now, a lot of us, let me be very honest with you. Uh, I, maybe I should teach it from this angle. One day, Paul was talking to Timothy, or he wrote to Timothy, and he said to Timothy that, should I delay to come? There are things I'm saying to you so that you will know how I'm connecting that scripture to Psalms 26. So that you will know how to behave yourself in the house of God. Which he goes further to describe is the ground of truth. Do you understand? So, good. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. There is a way to behave yourself even in the house of God. Why? Because it is where God's presence dwells. God's honor dwells. You can't behave in God's house like you are in your parlor at home. Uh -huh. It's getting hot. And some of us can't tell the difference between how to behave in church and how to behave 
in school, how to behave at work, how to behave at home. We can't tell the difference. So your behavior in school is your behavior in church and your behavior at work is your behavior in church and your behavior at at home is your behavior in church. Paul is telling Timothy that in case I delay, I don't want you to behave in the house of God. I want you to know how to behave yourself in the house of God. <laughs> the Bible is sweet. It's just that you don't like reading it. Yeah, but the Bible is sweet. Yes. I want you to know how to behave yourself. So sometimes when somebody corrects even your posture, do you understand? Like for example, I believe that it's the utmost disrespect to sit in church and even cross your leg. Yes. I wouldn't do it in front of my father. Yeah, let's be serious. I wouldn't do it in front of my father. Like I'm so relaxed and comfortable in the presence of my father that I even cross my it will never occur to me. Yes. I have uncles who are not like my biological father, but when I'm in their presence, there is a certain reverence. I can't try it. Yes, I can't try it. Yeah. My spiritual father came here a couple of um, years ago, you know, and um, when I was in driving, one of my pastors was driving, and I couldn't sit at the front and leave him alone at the back, so I would have to sit at the back with him and keep him uh, company. And I couldn't even like sit, and that, there's a moving car, I couldn't sit and lean back and then I'm talking to him. No. I push myself forward. This is a moving car. I push. And maybe, you see, I know, I know what is going through your head right now. You know, I know. Don't worry. Now, I'm seated at the back with him. And so he's seated straight like this, of course. Isn't this how he sits in a car? And then you buckle up. But I deem it disrespectful to also sit and lean back. So all throughout the days he was here and has been driven, this is my posture in the car. Because honor is also giving attention to somebody. You are the one your father is talking to and you are on the phone. So all throughout the days he was here, at the back said, this is how I sat, to give attention to him. I, you know, he said, what of if the car break and you, 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 you have an accident? That's, 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 that's your thinking. But that wasn't in my mind. Because I couldn't sit like an equal and then we are moving and we are talking. No, this is the posture of humility. So I'm focused on him to hear him. And this was how I sat throughout the car all the days he was in town. Yes. You are on your phone. And as you are talking, you are typing. No reverence. No honor. Yes. I didn't even know that's how I was sitting until my pastor asked me a question. And then it drew my mind to the fact that this is how I was sitting. Yeah, this is how I was sitting. You, you, yeah, you, Hati? Eh? Are you listening to the teaching at all? So, <laughs> Timothy is being told that there is a way they understand to behave in the house of God which is the church of the living God this church is the church of the living God <laughs> that's why when you turn this church into a brothel a place where you pick girls <laughs> uh -huh now uh, the church of the living God is not the church of the brothels. <laughs> you, when you turn the church of the living God to a place where you pick girls, 
Yeah, you don't know how to behave in the house of God. Oh yeah, I, I see the church is quiet now. That, that, I must stay there. I must stay on that point. Yes. Huh. Oh yeah. How to behave? He says, in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. It is the church of the living God. Yeah. Thank God that the owner of the church is a living God. Yes. Not, not Apostle Raymond, yeah? Not your pastor. He's, the, he's the, the living God of his church. You get the point now? Oh, yeah. Huh. How to behave? As so much, Paul also taught behavior. Yeah, you know, sometimes maybe you, you, you were not taught some things. Yeah, there are a lot of things you can do out of ignorance. Yeah, by the way, there's so many things you can do out of ignorance. Yeah. The problem is when you have now received light, how you behave after. Yeah, so there are some things you can do out of ignorance. Are you listening to me? Yes, until light comes. Yes, and light must bring about a certain transformation and change do, do you get it so he says it is the church of the living god the pillar and ground of truth so knowing how to behave in the house of god is very important do you understand yeah i can't be teaching you and you are checking how many goals Liverpool has scored. I can't be teaching you in the house of God and you are repli replying a text to your girlfriend. Baby, hold on. Baby, hold on. This pastor has not finished. But I'll be on my way the moment he finishes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can start cooking. And you are in the house of God. You get a point now. Yeah. And the reason is because Psalms 26 verse 8. It is the place where God's honor dwells. Yes. It is a place God's honor dwells. Wow. You, you can't joke with that. You understand? You can't joke with that. You know? Like there are some people as the pastor is teaching, they are chewing gum. Uh, that's another behavior in the church. <laughs> hey, they will chew, 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 chew. And then sometimes they forget themselves and then they do tap. Is, how do they call it? Is it a blow? They blow. They... Hey! And then when they get tired of chewing, they remove it and stick it on the seat of the church of the living God. Meanwhile, they will not stick gum on the sofa in their rooms. But God's chair can receive some chewing gum. You see, you don't like the teaching now. You see, you don't like the teaching now. As for God's chairs, they can receive some chewing gum. Yeah, but the sofa in your room, hey, no, no, touch it. Yeah. Yes, I'm teaching you how to behave. You got a point now. Yeah, I'm teaching you how to behave. In the house of the living God. Yes, this is the house of the living God. How can you drink... Um, is it that that drink? Monster. Monster. Is it monster? No, the other one. The, the one they, they, they used to have a lot around here. Power play. How can you drink power play and leave the bottle 
under the seat and walk to your house. And you are leaving the bottle of power play in the house of God. The church of the living God. Oh yeah. So honor dwells in God's house. That's why of all places, the church must be where we teach a lot about honor. Yes. And the people who are in the church must practice honor. Yes, more than anything, practice honor. Are you listening to me? So, John 11, we see Mary and Martha and they are reaping the rewards of honor. How? Number one, those who honor experience supernatural power. Yes, it is supernatural for a man to wake from the dead after four days. Do you get it? And it only happened because Mary and Martha honored Jesus. So when their brother died, he came to wake him up from death. Are you listening to me? Yeah, so, and it's supernatural. Yeah, it's supernatural. Yeah, very, very supernatural. If you don't believe me, just go to a funeral where they are about to bury somebody and the person wakes up. The pastor plus everybody will run for their lives because it's an abnormal thing to wake from the dead. Yes. Eh? Morife. Yes. <laughs> Nobody is going to stop there asking, Umeamuka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh? Nobody. Yeah. They'll, they'll talk to you from afar. You got a point now. Even the most courageous will morife. Yes. Oh, run. Yeah. Because it's a strange phenomenon. Very strange. Do you understand? Yeah. Very strange. That's why when a pastor wanted to show the whole world he resurrected the dead, in the manner that he resurrected the dead, everybody could see through the facade. Yes. Because the dead is not me. I've been taken to a dead body to pray before. Yes. At that time, I was, I was, I was on fire without knowledge. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was very young, pretty young, in early 20s. Yeah. To even be in a room with a dead body is not a joke. Yes. When you are praying in tongues, you just be looking around. You, 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 you know, you, you, you are in a... a it's like a fearful expectation. Yeah, you want the dead to rise, but you're also careful when the dead rises. Yeah, it's like you're not ready. Yeah, that, I think that's why we don't easily raise the dead in our time. Yes, and I, I can be very honest with you. Even now, if you take me to a dead body, I'll be very careful unless I know the person. Like I know, no, 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 know the person. Do you understand? Like, I no, 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 the person. So even when the person opens his or her eyes, it wouldn't frighten me as much. He, he may just open the eyes and say, Apostle. But if the person is not so known to me, and he will, hey, uh, what do I do with my Bible and anointing oil? <laughs> Fourth floor to first floor in an instant. Morife. Yeah. <laughs> One of the reasons why um, the late Archbishop Idaosa was so much revered was because of how many dead people he resurrected in his lifetime. Yes. And it takes, now that one is, it, it, it requires what is called extraordinary faith. And before you stone me, that faith is not given to everybody. Is a gift. Yes. And I can't stand here and tell you that I possess that gift. I'm telling you, I know a measure of where I belong. Yes. 
when his father, when his mother died, the late Archbishop Idaosa, he was away on a crusade, and he was called and told, "Your mother is dead." And he told them, "Do not bury my mother." They washed her and they kept her in a room till, or he rather told them to take her to his room or something. They kept his mother till after three days when he returned and he came and resurrected the mother from the dead. Yes. That's the kind of faith he walked in. Do you understand? Yeah. I don't have it. Yeah. I know you are telling yourself, yeah, I, I, I can try. You don't have it. You don't have it. Yes. If I'm on a crusade platform and they bring the dead and put on the platform, I will change where I am preaching from. That's the truth. Yes. I hope to one day resurrect the dead. I'm not saying I don't want to. I hope to. But like, don't come now. That's what I'm saying. Don't come now. You die forever. You gotta don't come now. Yes. One day I I I want I hope to resurrect the dead. Yes. I I I want to be there before you go beyond my my limit. Yes. Maybe try to prevent you from dying. But after you die, I think that you have done your part. Yes. You have done your part. You got a point now. Yeah. So it's supernatural. Yeah, that's why people who honor, they receive supernatural things or supernatural things happen in their lives. Yeah, as, uh, as regard this thing, I can also tell you about Elisha. Do you understand? And the, wo the woman of Shunem, they honored Elisha. They gave Elisha a house, a room in their house gave him a bed gave him table and then they provided for me so they, they were living in Nairobi Elisha came from Kakamega so every time he passed by Nairobi he had a place to go do you understand and then right in the house the woman had not given birth so Elisha was wondering what shall we do for this woman I mean, she's taking care of us with so much care. What shall we do for, for the woman? So, he called the woman and asked the woman, what shall I do for you? You have done so much for me. What shall I do for you? Should I speak to the king on your behalf? The king was like the president. I have connection to the state house. Is there a business you need? The woman said, no. I'm all right. I live amongst my own people. As you can see, I'm not badly off. Do you understand? So the woman asked for nothing. Then when the woman left, his servant told him that she doesn't have a son. So he called the woman again and said, a year like this time, you will carry a son. That was it. That was it. Now that itself is supernatural. Do you understand? Not, not prayers. So, called the woman and said, according to the time of life. And truly, she gave birth to a son. As Elisha had prophesied. And the boy grew, the boy grew, the boy grew. He, he was still passing by. And one of the times he passed by, the boy had a headache. And he went to tell the father, and the father said, take him to his mother. I mean, fathers are the same. Yeah. The, the response is so fatherly. Yeah. The boy is having a headache. They brought him to the father. The father's response is, take him to his mother. When he went to the mother, laid on the lap, and the boy died. And then the woman took the dead boy. I'm showing you supernatural on that comes by reason of honor. So she took the boy and rode until he met the man of God. Do you understand? And she was crying. She was crying. 
Man of God, I told you not to lie to me. The servant went to push away the woman. And he said, leave her. Something has happened to her and God has not revealed it to me. Wow. What is it that when it happens to you and your prophet doesn't know, it pains him? I mean, like, who are you? Do you understand? Who are you? It pained Elisha that something could happen in this woman's life and God didn't bother to reveal it to him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. For her soul is vexed within her and the Lord had hid it from me and had not told me. Wow. Because she greatly honored the prophet. Give me verse 28. Are you here? Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any man salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. So Elisha had a mantle, a staff. Do you understand? Like it was something he held a lot of times. So and normally in, in the prophetic, when, or just generally, spiritually, anything a man of God has had uh, use of often is invested with something. And is not superstitious, it's real. Do you understand? So he believed that the staff had some power. Wow. Go and lay it on the face of the boy. And he told Gehazi what not to do, what not to do as he was going. Verse 30. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. So as Gehazi was going, the woman wanted Elisha to come. So Elisha followed behind. Do you understand? Let's go. I think I like where the teaching is going. And Gehazi passed on before them. So he took the lead. And laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him. And told him saying the child is not awaked. So Elisha, uh, Gehazi went and did what he was told. But the child did not. But of course we know why. Later we discover that Gehazi was covetous. And with covetousness in his heart, it would be very dangerous if he had resurrected this child. He, he would have charged the mother and told Elisha, you didn't do the miracle, I did it. God has a way of doing things as well. Uh, some of you, you can walk in certain levels of anointing. The only reason you can't is because of what is in your heart. Careful. Yeah. Hmm. If by mistake you, your center member dies and you resurrect him, you form Resurrection Power Ministries International. A place where the dead are resurrected effortlessly. <laughs> Bring the dead. Yes. And when you are teaching, you, are, you say something like, we have left ministries where there is no power. <laughs> we have left where we were before. Where there was no power. That's why we are now in resurrection power. Wow. <laughs> Careful. That's why when you are preaching, the house flies visit you a lot. Yes, at your center. Yes, you can't raise the dead. You get the point now. Yeah, but at least bad though. Yeah, not, not yet. Careful. Yeah. Verse 32. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. I'm showing you the supernatural somebody receives because of honor. He went in therefore 
and shut the door upon them twin that is he kept Gehazi outside and he kept the mother outside the two of them and he was alone with the dead boy and prayed unto the Lord look at it and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth my God <laughs> levels of faith and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm yes yes supernatural happenings because when people die one of the ways you know they are dead is how icy cold their body feels yes their body feels icy cold so now elisha is putting the anointing into the dead body i'm just trying to simplify the whole thing power was moving from his body into the dead child that's why the bible wants you to know that the flesh of the child was warm it was warm verse 35 then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes supernatural happiness sneezing seven times that's not normal you can do two yes you can do two he did seven times do you understand? I believe he was sneezing the death that had entered his body out of his body. He sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. Verse 36. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Wow. Supernatural things. Supernatural things. Many of us want supernatural things. But we don't want to honor. Yes, this kind of supernatural things come as a result of honor. Are you listening to me? Number two, those who honor receive great miracles. Those who honor, they receive what? Great miracles. Not small miracles. They receive what? Great miracles. May I stop here and suggest to you that in the ministry of Jesus, he never went where he was needed. Uh huh. Pay attention. Jesus never went where. He was needed. He went where he was honored. Let me give you an apologia. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, um, of course, ignorant people. Eh? If the pastors say they are powerful, if they say they are prophets, they should go to the hospitals. Have you heard that before? It is the argument of ignorant people because miracles are literally drawn out a man can have a miracle power but it needs somebody to draw it out you see that a man has power is not enough are you listening to me that a man has power is not enough. Jesus had power. There were instances where he told the people that healed that your faith has made you whole. So you can be an embodiment of the miraculous, but there is nobody around you with the faith to draw it out. So it may look like there's no power, but there's power. It takes a certain act to draw out the miraculous. Yes. Yes. So as often as I hear, if they can heal the sick, 
if they can heal the sick or oh, all those healings on a crusade they are fake they are not real listen hundred thousand people have gathered in a stadium and they are looking at Reinhard Bonnke they are looking at Bishop Bishop Dark and all those tens and tens of thousands of people have expectation and you there is no place there is an expectation and there will not be manifestation so that is miracles being drawn out do, do you understand what I'm saying? How did the woman with the issue of blood get healed? She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. I will be healed. So Jesus was just walking. Je, je, je. You understand? He was just walking. Je, je, je. Then he felt like, oh, something has left me. Something has come out. So he turns and he says, who touched me? <laughs> Peter and the others say, there are countless people surrounding you and you are asking who touched you? He said, yeah, somebody has touched me. How do I know? Virtue has left me. What does it mean? Somebody has made a withdrawal. So you sit in church with no man, no expectation. Your coming to church is kawaida. Yes. And you sit in church, kawaida. When you talk, kawaida. Nothing. No, no faith. No expectation. So you can have no miracles. Yes. Yeah. How does a fountain of blood for a woman who has been bleeding ceaselessly for over decades just dries her faith do you understand so in the ministry of Jesus he went where he was honored not where he was needed you may have a need do you understand a man of God will not throw himself on you because you sat in church with a very sad face those of you who sit in church with sad faces thinking that by reason of your sad face God will he responds to faith not the look of your face yes. I said God responds to faith not the look of your face he responds to faith yes so if you like be the most sad person in the church you will be there forever yes until you have faith yes he went where he was needed so when people say oh if all these pastors why are they the blind here why are they the 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 sick are in the hospitals they should go to the hospital charlie you don't understand so many things yeah you don't know how things work are you listening to me yeah you don't know how things work that is why mary and martha had the miraculous they honored jesus yes they honored jesus take me to mark chapter 6 from verse 1 give me um the nlt straight out look at this pay attention to this scripture jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to nazareth his hometown careful now we are in some people's hometown the next sabbath that is the next sunday he began teaching in the church in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed as he was teaching they were amazed some of you there's no teaching you hear that amazes you <laughs> all teachings are kawaii teachings for you there's no teaching you hear that mesmerizes you, moves you. And you're like, wow, what a teacher. Wow, what a word, what a message. Nothing moves you. Yes, nothing moves you. 
they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? We're talking about people who honor receiving what? Miracles. Great miracles. Those of you who are fighting for people to believe in you, I am very sorry for you. If you are a pastor, if you are a woman of God, if you are a servant of God, you don't have to waste your time fighting for anybody to believe in you. Believe in your ministry. You must have the experience to move away from people who don't honor you and locate those who honor you and you see things happening. Things will just be happening. Yes. I want my church to have young people who believe in me, believe in my anointing, and things will just be happening. Yes. Yes. In fact, me, I actually even believe that if you stay in a church for five years, we should send you to another church. It's like I've been thinking about it. Like all my five-year-old church members should go to another pastor. The problem in every church are those who have been there longest. Uh, it's, it's going to be hot. The greatest problem in the church are those that have been there longest yes they don't believe anything anymore they don't trust anything anymore yes that's why you see when 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 you are young you're 18 19 you're very happy you're very jovial you're very exciting you know you know there's a bounce in your steps you know, when you move, your buttocks goes like this. There's a bounce in your step. Yes. When they are young, you know, when they are very fresh. Yes. They have not encountered certain things in this life. Yes. Then by the time they are 45. By the time they are 50. You understand? Even if they have what they can shake. They are not interested in shaking it. The thing just stays there. Yes. That is why older and elderly people, they look very bitter. Yes, just look at your mother. You understand what I'm talking about. Yes. The young people are trusting. They have not experienced certain things. Yes. The older people get, the more they become untrusting. Yes. Now you have to give hundred reasons why. Yes. Whereas when they were young, just as the, the you, you sp- ah, that's it. That's it. That's it. After 150 heartbreaks, she doesn't smile anymore. Hmm. 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 Yeah. You know, like older men, older men, or men growing have even a little bit more joy and excitement. If if I as men grow, they still want to believe that Charlie, I'm not old. I'm still yeah, but not women. They're not women. Yeah. If you walk to an elderly woman and say, How oh, Murembo is hey, go punish you there. Do you think was her response when she was 21? <laughs> when she was 21, what was her response? Oh, are you sure? Now you are telling her at 55, Murembo, is that her? Go punish you there. <laughs> 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 
she she maybe give you a nod <laughs> <laughs> so you say, come here, <laughs> take this now. True or not true? Yes. The biggest problem in the church are those who have been around for too long. Yes. So when they see new people in the church who, you know, first laugh, you know, first laugh, they are excited. They are dancing. This is how I praise you. Like, hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> what is all this? Charlie, you have been around for too long. That's your problem. You see, God is not your problem. And your pastor is not your problem. You have been around for too long. You don't believe anything anymore. You don't believe in the anointing anymore. You don't believe you can have the miraculous anymore. So nothing great that can be called a miracle ever happens in your life. Yes. And you see when people are new and they receive the anointing with expectation and excitement. You see their lives changing. Things happening for them. Yeah. And you see Botele Bitalif widow. Yes. In fact, people who have been so long in the church easily become witches. Yes, easily become witches. Yes, because as they are seeing other people excited, they start praying bad prayers for them. You will soon calm down. Is that not the prayer of a witch? I said, is that not the prayer of a witch? Why are you praying for somebody to calm down? Why? Are you not a witch? Let's see if two years from now they'll be smiling. <laughs> they easily become witches in the church. Yes. Ah. After service, they call the most exciting sister. Young lady, come. <laughs> young man, come. I want to talk to you. Yeah, as you are young now, hmm? as you are young, find something profitable. To do with your energy you know I, and I'm, I'm tech telling you because you know so we, I, I was once where you were you are I was once where you are see, see a witch is advising you yes yes <laughs> we, we have been around for that's why I think we should just agree that when you are five years old we send you to another pastor yes Yes, we just send you to another pastor. You know the point now? Yeah, where you can maybe at least find a little excitement. Yes. Find some first love there. Yeah. Married people are really happy. Yes. Yes. After being together with one person, they understand. Look at you. If you don't believe me, look at your mother and your father. Yeah. When you can remember when you were young, you saw your father kissing your mother. In the last five years, no, in the last seven years, have you seen your father kiss your mother publicly? They look like relatives. Yes. So naturally, unless you are spiritual, you can easily degenerate into a familiar face. A familiar person with no faith, with no excitement, with no belief, only because you have hung around too long. Yes. <laughs> Imagine how happy we will all be if God has said you marry for five years and you change. like it's a contract five years because you see when you now move you the woman you now move to a new man you will become exciting you get it yeah you become very exciting yes and very flowing than the one you have stayed with even when you are driving 
but a new you get it then you are excited about him yeah yeah for another five years Uh huh then next yeah imagine how a, a very happy marriages will have because even if she is bad you just know that in five years time <laughs> like in five years time yeah <laughs> let me hold on the future is bright the next one will be very exciting the next one will be very you know wow but this one mm-mm. yes so you can see that staying around too long and not being very spiritual turns you into somebody who becomes familiar yeah. until you can't believe in the supernatural you can't believe in miracles are, are you listening to me yeah so they refuse to believe in him oh yeah when is my church and pastoring now becomes familiar i'll go and start another church yes when they become family, I'll start another church. Starting a church is not a problem for me. Yes. I'll start another church. Oh yeah. I distributed some familiar people. I distributed them. You get the point now? Yes. Because you cannot have even spiritual excitement. There are some people when they are around, they control the environment. They frown intentionally. Then the people they control, when the people are happy, oh, woman of God, they look at them. So you see, the atmosphere is choked. Remove such a person, and you see the church is happier. Yes. If you want me to change your church for you, continue frowning. Yes. I'm that kind of a pastor. Yes. I don't see why you should torture yourself being in a church you are not happy with. I will help you change church. I'll tell you, Charlie, look for another church and go. Yes. We are not fighting here. And I'm not Shaka the Zulu trying to raise warriors. I'm, I'm just here and I want a happy church. And your frowning is a problem. Oh yes. I'll help you find another church where you'll be very happy. Yes. Why should you be here? In fact, you are better off going to Churchill. Does he still do it? Does he still do it? Even Churchill has closed down his church. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. In fact, I see some of those people who go for comedy shows. You see them? Yeah. A comedian is doing everything to make them laugh. You have paid money to go and frown. <laughs> oh, you don't see them. Sometimes the camera catches them. And you see the person is there like, you can't force me. Meanwhile, you have paid money that I am coming to laugh. And it's like you are telling the comedian, try harder. Try harder. Try harder. You can't force me. Try harder. You can't force me. And then you are in the church with you can't force me. You can't force me to say amen. You can't force me to shout. You can't force me to say hallelujah. You need to change your church. Yeah, so we are left with young and happy and exciting people. Yeah. Those of you who have collected PhD in Love Springs, Love Springs PhD. Charlie, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. We are looking for first years. Yes. First year, first lovers. Yeah. Freshers. Yes. Get the point now. Yeah. As I'm standing here, I am gradually watching people becoming 30 years old. I'm watching people becoming 45 years old. Literally in the church. You think pastoring is a joke? Huh. 
Uh, <laughs> hey! <laughs> and as the years go by, I see how they are not excited anymore. <laughs> yes. As the years go by, I see their, their light diminishing. I see their excitement disappearing right before my very eyes. And yet I'm an exciting pastor. And I'm still an exciting teacher. But as they sit down there, I see the joy diminishing and the light and the sparkle leaving their eyes. <laughs> I haven't mentioned your name. Just look straight and smile. Yes. Huh. Huh. Oh, don't, 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 don't charge yourself. Huh. And don't, 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 just pick, pick yourself and say, I must believe. Yes, I must believe. Huh. I must believe.